Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at this CPA exam simulation. The first thing you do when you are faced with a CPA exam simulation is just to browse to see what is the simulation is all about. And if we click here, it looks like we have to do some computation. Now, some simulations, there might be a drop down menu. In some simulation, you might have to do journal entries. In some simulation, you might have to review some document and correct certain items. And in some simulation, you might have to do some research. Well, this is computational. So we have to do some computation and input the answers. This is the type. After you figure out the type, and this should take you like two seconds, is the topic. What is the topic about? First, take a look at the items here. Just browse through the simulation. It looks like amount at risk, amount at risk, suspended passive loss. Well, at this point, you know what is the simulation is about. It's about the amount at risk and passive losses. Notice here, suspended passive losses, passive losses. Once you know this, okay, say, okay, great. It's about at-risk amount and passive losses. You should be breathing slower, stay calm. You learn this with Farhat. You learn this with your account, with your CPA review course. I am ready to tackle this simulation. What you do is look to see how many exhibits you have. You only have one exhibit, year two activity. At this point, we're going to read this and before we open the exhibit and learn a little bit more about what we are being asked, then we would look at the exhibit and you will start to answer the questions. The key is not to panic. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. On January 1st, year two, two individuals taxpayers, Berkey B and Link L, B and L, each invested in a business activity. Burke actively participated in the rental commercial property. So it's active and it's rental. This is relevant, important. It should be, that should be processing in your mind. Link was a passive investor in a cattle breeding business operated as a limited partnership. Both activities sustained losses in year two. The exhibits above relate to, the, to each activity for Berkey and Link. So let's take a look at the exhibit. They're referencing the exhibit. Now, real quick, look at the exhibit. Berkey and the commercial real estate active, 50% owner in the activity. Berkey invested, I'm just going to say B invested $10,000 in cash. Modified adjusted gross income, 110. Investor share of activity loss is 35. There's 35,000 of losses from this rental activity. Investor share of non recourse debt as of December 31st year two. So notice here what they're giving you. They're giving you their share. They're not telling you the debt and the partnership and you have to figure things out. They're telling you Berkey's investor share, B investor share, and it's a non recourse. Well, it's 50,000. Also, Berkey's share of recourse that is 45. Now you want to know the difference between recourse and non-recourse debt. Well, what is recourse debt? <laughs> recourse debt means what? Recourse debt means B, so the recourse debt is responsible, personally responsible for the debt. So there's more risk for B because if anything goes wrong, B, the, the, the lender can come after B personally. Non-recourse debt usually is 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 a collateralized debt what does that mean it means this debt there's an asset that's put against that debt and this debt is basically is the responsibility for all the partners this is the difference this is for b and passive income from other sources b does not have any passive income from other sources let's look at l his share in the interest and of the partnership 10 percent link invested sixty thousand. Modified adjusted gross income, 175. Investor share of activity loss. We have a loss we are dealing with here. Investor share of non-recourse debt, 40,000. Investor share of recourse debt is zero. And we have passive income from other sources. So L, he got a passive income from other sources. This is what we have. Okay, great. 
Now you're going to take a note of this, maybe copy this down real quick on a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what you want to do. Now we are ready to answer the question. First thing we are going to compute is the amount at risk in measuring loss limitation for B and for L. What is the amount of risk? The amount of risk is how much you invested and you are at risk if something happens. Well, you could invest cash, you could invest property, you can invest, uh, you could have some recourse that because you are responsible for that. So we have to look at B and B invested $10,000 in cash, no property, and B is responsible for a $45,000 recourse debt. Well, that's what we have. At risk amount for B is 55,000. L, link, invested cash of 60,000. There's no property involved. There's no recourse debt. There's no, rec uh, there's no recourse debt. What does that mean? It means L is responsible for how much? L is responsible for $60,000. This is the at risk amount. Well, at this point, you'll go back here. You'd say, okay, great. Um, I believe it was 55,000 for 55, 55,000 for B and 60,000 for L. This is the amount of risk. That's the, that's the question. The loss that can be deducted in year two. Now, why do we have to compute? Uh, why do we have to compute the loss to be deducted? Because that's good. Because they both have losses. They both have losses. B has 35 losses from the partnership, uh, from the real estate. And L has $50,000, okay, commercial real estate. Now, how much of losses can, can uh, be deducted? Well, we have at risk amount of 35000 But how much can we deduct? Remember, B is an active, B is an active, B is an active participant. Remember, they told it's a real estate property and it's, he's active. Well, if he's active, basically nothing. However, and here we have to kind of be careful, know the rule about rental real estate. He's active, it's rental real estate. There's an exception for small businesses, mom and pop, and you can deduct up to 25,000 if you're a small business. It's, it's called the mom and pop exception. What does that mean? It means of the 35,000, of the 35,000 for the rental, remember it's a rental, there's a possibility of B deducting 25,000. Can be deduct 25,000. There's a plenty of basis. Well, yes and no. Yes means possibility, but there's a limitation. Well, why? Let's look at B's income. Because remember, this is for small, for small, small business people. <laughs> or mom and pop. That's called mom and pop. The modified adjusted income for B is 110. And this is one of the things that you have to know about, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't need to, to know a lot about limita limitations, but this is, you have to know the mom and pop rule. The mom and pop rules, yes, yes, you can get deduct 25,000 of, of, uh, of your income, of your income and losses. However, Congress is a generous to a point. If you, ha if you're making in quote too much money, according to Congress and too much money starting at 100,000, going up to 150 there's a range of fifty thousand dollar once you start to go above that range in agi you will start to lose part of that 25 now b happens to be b happens to be standing b happens to be standing right here at 110 so b is ten thousand dollar inside the range of fifty thousand so that's 10,000 divided by 50 is 20%. What does that mean? It means of the 25,000 that you can potentially deduct, first of all, B has $35,000 in losses, plenty of losses, and B has plenty of basis. However, because of the mom and pop exception, at least they're getting 25, then you have the limitation. So you have to take out 20% of this. You're going to lose 5,000. What's left is only... 20,000 you can deduct. I mean, if this was some other business, you can deduct any of it. Why? Because B is an active participant in this real estate. If you're active, you cannot, you know, take active losses and deduct it against passive law, the passive, uh, passive basis. So therefore, you can do that. You cannot take basically because this is an active income, active loss, actually, active loss. You can do that uh, because you're active. You're active in the partnership. Then what's going to happen? You can only deduct 20,000. Therefore, as far as 
B, we can deduct 20,000. Okay, we can deduct 20,000. If, if, again, if their AGI was less than 100,000, they could have took the, they could have took the 25,000. What about L? L's basis is 60, and L losses are, losses are, where's the losses? Uh, cash investment, modified AGI, 50,000. So there's plenty of losses and plenty of basis. Can we deduct this? No, we can't. Because, because of what? Again, this is passive loss, passive loss, passive loss. Okay? This is not real estate, real estate business. If it was, you know, like B, B was able to deduct some of it, L cannot. However, if we notice L has $5,000 in passive income, you can take passive losses and L is a passive investor. He's a limited investor, silent investor, and we can deduct of the 50,000, we can deduct only five because the five, it's going to take out the passive income. So you can deduct passive losses against passive income. And as a result, the answer for this is only 5,000. So you can take the losses and deduct 5,000 against passive income from other sources. That's fine. Passive losses can be deducted, deducted against passive income. Amount at risk at December 31st, year two. So what's the amount of risk at December 31st? year two. Well, we have to do what? Well, we have to start with our initial investment. So let's go back to the, let's go back here. So we started with the, uh, the balance was, we started with how much? We started with 55,000. So let's go down here. We started with 55,000. Then we had a loss of 35,000. Hold on a second. Yes, you had a loss of 35,000, but why are you dedu deducting 35,000? You were only able to deduct 20,000. Remember, we only actually were able to deduct 20,000. Although you can only deduct 20,000, the 35,000 of losses would reduce your at risk amount. So you're at the end of the year, the at risk amount is 20,000. The same concept applies to L. L's basis of 60,000 and L losses, how much? L's losses were 50,000. Well, L only deducted five. It does not matter. When we adjust the basis, we adjust it for all the losses. Therefore, what's left is 10,000. Okay, let's go back here. You'll put 20,000. for Berkey, the at-risk amount at the end of the year, and 10,000 for L. Last question is suspended passive losses. What is suspended? Suspended means you cannot use now. It's, they're suspended. Well, let's see. Let's go back to that one note. You had 35,000 of losses. B had 35,000 of losses in total. B was able to use how much of it? 20,000. What is the suspended? 15. L had $60,000 of losses. Uh, yes, 60,000. And L, 50 or 60. Let's see. Uh, L. Uh, 50,000. The base is starting at 60. So L had 50. Was able to, to use 5,000. The suspended are 45,000. 45,000. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to input the answer. 15,000 and 45,000. What's going to happen with my suspended pa passive losses? They're suspended. I can use those losses to offset passive income in future years. So I'm going to carry them so I can offset passive income in future years. So this is how you will approach this simulation. Let's recap. What type of simulation? Number computation. Topic, at risk, and passive activity losses. Now, Right from the get-go, if you if you if you were not prepared, if you did not learn about the at-risk amount, how to compute the at-risk amount, the, the passive activity loss rule, 
you can't answer this multiple this simulation whether it's a simulation or a multiple choice if you don't know the topic you don't know the topic okay because i can take this four questions and then turn it each one of them into a multiple choice and that's why i always say a simulation is no more than a multiple choice the key to solving simulation is knowledge and where can you obtain the knowledge with confidence i can tell you with far hat lectures you can get this knowledge this is how i can help you prepare for the exam invest in yourself cpa exam is worth it i'm always here to help you and stay safe